In today's video, we're going to be talking about the six healthiest cooking oils and the ones you should be absolutely avoiding if you're serious about your health. And spoiler alert, this list might shock you. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos twice a week here on YouTube talking all things insulin resistance, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you're ready to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that does it all. Head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate to start your free trial today. So we're gonna start off today talking about the cooking oils that you should absolutely avoid because understanding why these oils are problematic will help you to also understand why the six we talk about later in this video are beneficial. So the long and short of it is you want to avoid vegetable oils, AKA seed oils. And stick with me here because you might be thinking to yourself, vegetable oils, but vegetables are healthy, so what's wrong with their oils? Here's the thing. Most of the oils that fall under the category of vegetable oil do not actually come from vegetables. When we refer to vegetable oils, we are referring to plant oils that come from the seeds of plants that are high in polyunsaturated fat. So that's not all plant oils, and we will get to why this is important a little bit more in a second. So oils that fall under this category are Canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, grapeseed oil, sunflower oil, cottonseed oil, safflower oil, and rice bran oil. Okay, but you might be thinking, well, okay, these oils don't come from vegetables, but I still don't see the problem. The first issue is that they are high in polyunsaturated fat, which is an issue when it's consumed in large quantities. So taking it back a step, there are three main types of fat. There are two types of unsaturated fat, which are polyunsaturated and monounsaturated, and then there's saturated fat. All foods that contain fat contain a combination of the three. The main difference between these three types of fat for today's purposes is the way they react to light, heat, and oxygen, because it's different for all of them. When fat reaches a certain temperature, it oxidizes, AKA it goes rancid and consuming fat that's oxidized creates free radicals in the body. Free radicals are atoms that have one or more unpaired electron. These electrons go around trying to make themselves whole again by taking electrons from healthy cells. When they take electrons from other cells, that means those cells are now missing electrons and they turn into free radicals themselves. They basically cause a chain reaction. And these free radicals cause inflammation in the body. And this is part of the reason why autoimmune conditions such as arthritis and asthma have become so common. And this is the first reason you don't wanna be cooking with vegetable oils. Because polyunsaturated fats are the least stable type of fats. They go rancid really easy when they're exposed to heat, light, and or oxygen. Saturated fat is the most stable. It's solid at room temperature, and can be exposed to heat, light, and air more before it oxidizes. Monounsaturated is a bit less stable, but still more stable than polyunsaturated. And like I said, polyunsaturated is the worst. And even if you aren't cooking with them, if you're consuming them in salad dressings, for example, you still shouldn't be consuming them. This is because they are already heated to very high temperatures during processing. These high temperatures are needed to extract the oil from these plants. So they're likely already rancid by the time you buy them. Ever wonder why vegetable oils don't taste or smell like anything? It's because they're stripped of flavor and color to hide the fact that they're already rancid. Pretty gross, right? The second reason you don't wanna be cooking with vegetable oils is because they are very high in omega-6 fatty acids which are also inflammatory to the body when they're consumed in high amounts. Because both omega-3 and omega-6 are essential for our health, but it's too much omega-6 that can become a problem. Both of these omegas are converted in the body through the same pathway. High omega-6 in your diet means that not much omega-3 is going to be converted. 
You want your ratio of omega-3 to 6 to be as close to 1 to 1 as possible. But some of these oils, like grapeseed oil, are as high as 700 to 1 in favor of omega-6. And the average daily consumption for Americans is 20 to 1. And do you know what the number one source of omega-6 is in modern diets? It's vegetable oil. If you're consuming a diet that's very high in omega-6 on a continuous basis, this can contribute to chronic inflammation, which is the root cause of a lot of modern day diseases. It's also been connected to obesity and IBS. But if all of that is not bad enough, here's one final nail in the coffin. Because of the way vegetable oils are processed, some of the fat in them actually turns into trans fat. And I'm not even referring to hydrogenation, which is when trans fats are added on purpose. This has become a lot less common since the severe risks of consuming trans fat have become widely known, but rather the chemicals and the heat that these oils are exposed to during processing unintentionally causes trans fats to form. Even if the trans fat is listed as zero on the label, there still can be some. Even if it's just a trace amount, any amount of trans fat is too much. For every 2% increase in calories from trans fat, your risk of heart disease nearly doubles. And trans fat has also been associated with an increased risk of dementia. Okay, that got a lot more long-winded than I intended it to be. So now I'm going to finally get to the six best oils you can cook with. But quickly before I do, I'm just going to tell you about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for all of your online needs. Whether you are running a business, are starting a side hustle, or need a website for personal use, Squarespace has everything you need on one platform. Long gone are the days of hosting your website on one site, your email list on another, your payment platform on yet another, and your scheduling app on yet another. Squarespace makes your life easy by having all of these features and more on one platform. Not only is Squarespace practical and easy to use, it also allows you to create a clean and professional website without needing any experience in web design. Their award-winning templates are customizable and with only a few clicks, you can have the website of your dream that aligns with your brand. You can start a free trial and build your whole website, test everything out by heading to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate and when you love it and decide to launch, you can use code HEALTHCOACHKATE to save 10% off your order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. So what are the best oils you can cook with? They're oils high in monounsaturated fat and saturated fat, which are released easily from their source. Think about what it takes to get the oil out of an olive versus a corn kernel. Squeeze the olive in your hand and you can get the oil out easily. The corn kernel takes a lot more heat and processing. So starting off with number six, coconut oil. Coconut oil is mainly saturated fat, which is why it is solid at room temperature. So beyond being fairly stable for everything up to high temperature cooking, it also has a few other reasons why it's great. It is one of only a handful of plant foods that are rich in stearic acid. Stearic acid is a type of fat that has properties that protect against insulin resistance and support weight loss. You might have heard of stearic acid supplements before, which have been shown to help with weight loss. But consuming coconut oil has a similar effect. Coconut oil also contains a type of fat known as medium chain triglycerides, or MCTs. This fat also helps our bodies burn fat more efficiently for energy. I have a full video on MCTs, which I will link above if you want to know more. Number five, olive oil. Olive oil is higher in monounsaturated fat than saturated fat which is why it's liquid at room temperature. Because it's mainly monounsaturated fat, you don't really wanna use it for high temperature cooking or else it's just gonna oxidize like vegetable oils do. But for low and moderate temperature cooking, it's great. And what I find interesting about olive oil is that everyone seems to understand the importance of keeping it from oxidizing. It's usually in dark colored glass to protect it from light and heat and most people know to keep it stored in a cool location. If olive oil oxidizes, AKA goes rancid, we can taste it. And as I mentioned before, the reason that we don't care so much with vegetable oils is because they've already gone rancid and they've already been stripped of anything that could indicate to us that they have. 
But anyways, long story short, olive oil is great for low and moderate temperature cooking. Number four, lard. Now lard gets a bit of a bad rep, partly because it's high in saturated fat, which we've already discussed is not a bad thing, but also because some people are a bit funny about pork. But lard is actually a fantastic oil for cooking. Again, because it's high in saturated fat, it can withstand high heats, and it has the added bonus of being cheap. Number three, butter. Butter, again, solid at room temp, mainly saturated fat. It also contains some MCTs and some stearic acid, which we've previously spoken about their benefits. But the thing with butter is it does contain a little bit of protein, which is why when you heat it too much, it can burn. So like olive oil, it's good, lots of benefits, but mainly use it for low and moderate temperature cooking. Number two, tallow. Tallow usually refers to beef fat, but it can also be bison. Again, mainly saturated fat, solid at room temperature, and also really, really high in stearic acid. No catch here, tallow is great for any temperature of cooking. And finally, number one, ghee. Now, if you aren't familiar, ghee is actually butter that's been clarified, which basically means that the protein has been separated and removed. This means you're able to use it for higher temperature cooking without it burning like butter does. Even better is that when it's clarified, the lactose is removed. So a lot of people who are lactose intolerant, who maybe can't tolerate butter, they can tolerate ghee. Ghee is also great because it's very rich in fat soluble vitamins. So you get that as an added benefit. And then of course, ghee is absolutely delicious. It has this almost like caramel flavor to it. It's kind of like a little bit nutty as well. <laughs> If you haven't tried ghee before, I highly recommend it. I will link to some of my favorite brands in the description box down below. Or you can make it yourself using butter. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section down below what you use for cooking. Is it going to change after you watch this video? Let me know down below. I love chatting with you guys there. And before you go, also remember to check out Squarespace. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on the best foods you can eat for weight loss. You can check it out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my coaching programs, including my seven day insulin resistance masterclass, you can find this here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.